tonight are Jennifer and Jeremy from AGI. Okay. The forward journey. Great. Am I? Tell me when I'm on. I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me give you a little quick background. Of, um, if I'm too loud, tell me. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jeremy and I are from a design background, total design background. In fact, we go back to print. And a little story um, is that we've been doing web design development uh, for years. It sounds like there's some feedback. Can I turn it down maybe? Or no, I'm like hearing myself. But um, and about three years ago, Microsoft came to us and said we need to get more designers involved in. Um, our technology and working with developers and I, I'd say pretty much our team we had at the, that time probably about 20 or so people on our team and everyone was like no we're not going out to Microsoft to find out what they're doing for designers because it didn't ever make sense to designers to work we were totally Adobe applications and we went out and we saw Expression Studio and absolutely fell in love with it and the power and what you can do and the technology and the applications and how they work. And so for the last few years, um, we've been really putting our efforts into knowing the design side and also connecting to the development side. And a lot of our guys are um, people who work in development already, um, but with ActionScript and had to learn some C-sharp. And some of our guys had um, C++ background and they're actually learning how to use this. We're working on a project right now where we're building interfaces in Blend and they're going to be using embedded devices like what's in your car or you know, PHP Slate or whatever, which is so incredible. I know there's a lot of developers and a lot of designers here, but the power I feel as a designer that I can go in there and I can make the user interface on my crummy car system that I, I can never find my radio station I want and get to my GPS system. The fact that I can actually design that and pass that off to somebody, yeah, a developer to hook it up to um, C++ is just incredible. So just lots of neat things. Um, I also want to let you know that for the last few years, we've also been working really closely with Microsoft to kind of get designers and developers to work better together. Um, there is an application um, that we have up and running that we were uh, a large, we were involved in a large part creating called the Toolbox. And if you haven't gone to it yet, if you go to Microsoft.com slash design, there is a whole um, section of the site called Toolbox. And you can see, like, for instance, there, this is a, a video in this particular case, but we run through creating games, applications, and um, all sorts of Silverlight apps. Uh, and we provide videos step by step and all the, the assets that you need so that you can sit at home and if you have nothing better to do, you can run through and actually create Silverlight apps using uh, Discretion Studio. So um, lots of neat stuff that you can do. So I'd say we are pretty much about as hybrid as you can get, just our, our backgrounds and how we're um, using these applications. And so where we're going to go today, oh, I should just also announce too, um, we also are authors of a whole line of books called Digital Classroom, and we're going to raffle off some of these. So I wrote the Photoshop and Illustrator one. Jeremy wrote Dreamweaver. And um, so if you have questions relating to pretty much anything, um, if you're design and you're uh, interested in how to get this stuff to work in your interactive apps and you want to have some questions about Photoshop or Illustrator or Dreamweaver or whatever it may be, Flash, um, we can help you with that. So. Anyway, where we're going to be going, starting out with this a foundation of prototyping, this is what we're here to talk about. So um, we'll be talking a little bit about what's involved. Um, how many of you are developers? Okay. How many of you developers use um, any of the Adobe applications like Photoshop or Illustrator for prototyping now with fireworks or anything like that? Okay, so quite a few. I'd say like three quarters of you. Because we're going to be talking about um, something that's really big for designers, and that is staying in the tools that you know already to build your prototypes. And so we're going to talk about how you can build prototypes, of course, in Illustrator or in Photoshop. Fireworks is a little more interactive, but also some drawbacks, such as the fact that they're static. And how we'll be showing you how you can take your static prototypes and drop them in Expression Blend and make them interactive. So it's actually 
a pretty simple procedure. So we'll be talking about integrating those skills, taking advantage of planning tools. So Jeremy's got a whole presentation he's going to be doing on Sketchflow, which is incredible if you haven't seen it yet. Um, and also we'll take you through how to use Sketchflow to collaborate with others. And then also we're going to show how you can take advantage of creating reusable items so that you can quickly um, throw out your prototype and get tested and make sure it all works. So anyway, um, I just want to make this clear because this kills me. Even the people who should know better don't always do this with the prototypes, but sit down with a sketchbook, sketch out anything before you do it, put some thought into it, get post-its. This is my favorite, post-its and stick them all over a whiteboard and move them so that you get the flow down before you actually even go any further. Collaborate with people, get, get information from them, and then sketch some more. And it kills me that even major corporations uh, will put out um, an interface, and perhaps a, a website, and the user experience fails dramatically. And you'll ask them, did you have anyone look at this before you build it all out? And they're like, well, it's just us, you know, the internal crew. It just kills me because millions of dollars are being wasted on things that could have been fixed very early on. And um, I know we're involved, we go out to uh, Microsoft headquarters a lot, Redmond, and there are, on the expression team, a lot of meetings where they have to bring a sketchbook in with them in order to even attend the meeting. So they have to bring them because they want them thinking and they want them sketching and putting down their ideas and moving things around and scratching stuff out. And it makes a huge difference if there's been some thought put into the process. So I'm going to take you through, I am going to go actually into Illustrator and Photoshop. I have CS5 with me, which is the latest release. It's not even released yet. I've got the betas, but I'm allowed to show them because it's been announced. But here are the big things. If you're a designer and you're building in Illustrator and Photoshop, the pros are, of course, that they, the prototypes look really professional and finished. The cons are that they look really professional and finished. And that's because if you're doing a prototype, you know that if you're showing this to somebody, whether it be a client or someone else who's responsible, then they're going to start nitpicking and saying, yeah, but that arrow is just a little bit too small, or that color of orange is just really, uh, you know, and focusing on all the wrong things. And also the other thing that it, it's static. So none of this stuff actually works. So when Jeremy shows Sketchflow, he's going to be building prototypes, and he's going to be using what are called sketch styles. And so the, the prototypes are going to look hand-drawn, and they're going to have kind of sketchy type text so that you can purely test the flow and make sure that when you click on a certain navigation tool that it takes you to the right page or the expected page or that things work the way they're supposed to. And it takes away a lot of the stuff. So um, even though I am going to be opening up some Illustrator artwork right in Blend and adding some interactivity to it, just keep in mind that the goal would be to, before you even do a lot of this finished stuff, would be to go through and make sure the flow works correctly before you start focusing on whether you like this color gray or this color orange and how they work together. Okay, so this is what I was talking about, building using the tools you know. Um, the cool thing about Expression Studio, Microsoft has been really smart about this. If you're a designer and you're used to working in Illustrator or you're used to working in Photoshop, you continue working in those applications. And they import natively into Expression Blend, which is incredible because it's even more than that. Layers, if you save layers, the main layers come in. If you import Photoshop files, you can turn off and on layers as they come in. So you can actually be responsible for the composition of the layout in Blend or the XAML by doing it like you normally would work, which is, to me, so smart. So the, even though there's a product, if you have Expression Studio, even though there's a product included in that called Expression Design, don't touch it if you're an Illustrator user because it kind of works like Illustrator, it almost looks exactly like Illustrator, but you'll be restricted on some of the things. It doesn't have all the tools. And why relearn something when you can just continue working in the applications that you know? And I know some of you are working in Fireworks too. They import just like the Photoshop files. Fireworks creates Photoshop files, PSPs essentially. So those come in as well. Um, 
as you're working, I don't know, any of you guys see Up? <laughs> the movie Up? <laughs> That's why it's squirrel. Um, squirrel. But um, as you're working on the prototype, I think the big thing that I always try to get across is if you sketch something out and you get the flow in, just keep that focus, keep that energy throughout, and try to not, not let other people um, mess that up along the way. It's funny because um, Net Netflix has always been my idol as far as really great user experience. Because you go to their website and they had one single button. They had a picture and one button. And it was extremely effective. And I would I met somebody at Mix, Microsoft Mix, and I was talking to the guy who actually develops the um, Netflix website and um, I was like, I love the fact that you do this, that you keep it in control and you keep everyone out of it and the user experience is so good. And he was like, well, uh, that kind of stopped. Too many people tried to get involved and so I looked at it and all of a sudden now it's got, it looks like USA Today. You know, it's like, there's like 10 buttons across it and the experience has been lost. So it's really big to make sure that things are clear and clean and that people know where to go. It pays off, um, you know, in usability and of course, uh, gets you to your goal or you know whether it's buying something on the website or registering or signing up whatever it may be we're going to be talking about this uh, keeping it consistent and this is where when we get into more of the sketch flow de demo Jeremy's going to show you how to take care of components so that you can have um, items repeated on several pages that um, that are consistent uh, resources so that you can build controls controls in there too. Uh, color resources so you can save, perhaps you want to save a color theme that you'll want to go throughout. All of that is done um, in Expression Blend. So we'll be showing you how you can take advantage of that. Just a couple little things. Do sweat the small stuff because it's been proven that people trust um, a website that looks like it has some thought put into it and um, that it's easy to navigate. So, and test your prototype. And this is the thing that, again, just kills me. I mean, even last week I was, this is a toolbox site. <laughs> and I said, do you guys ever test that? Like, you need my mom to look at this. And it's really good if you're an intelligent person, you can get through it pretty easily. But that really wasn't tested with the general public. And that just, it just surprises me because I think it is painful to have somebody look at your prototype and, and listen to what they say. It's usually because you get defensive and you, you understand it and why don't they understand it? But it's so good to see you know, where other people are getting lost. And if you can build that consistency and build that flow right from the beginning, filling it in and making it look pretty is the easiest part. So it doesn't have to be a pretty website to make money. Um, a lot of ugly websites are extremely effective. I'm just, I love this, this is my last comment. Whitescape is your friend, even on the web. So, um, and then I'm going to exit out of here, and Jeremy will pick up the rest of the slideshow in a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and just start actually working. I'm out of PowerPoint, and I want to do some stuff here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just open up Photoshop, and again, this is CS5. I'm not going to be giving you a demo in it, but I am working in it. And I have something that was built in. We're going to pretend this was built in CS5, and you can see that in my layers panel, there are a whole bunch of layer groups, and in here are all these items. So if I select like these items, for instance, hello, let me just go ahead and grab the layers panel and pull it out. So the best way to show you would be to just turn off and on these eyeballs. I'm going to hold down my Alt key, but you can see that this layer is called Skill, and it's actually the Skill window, or here it's my Quick Start tab. So here's the big thing. If you're designing, and you're designing an interactive application or website, and you're working in Photoshop, you are really responsible for keeping this organized. Because this can get passed off to the developer. And exactly whatever your layers are called, then convert into what's called XAML, or the code that's used in Expression Blend. Which means that the developer can easily, he, he can locate this Do tab, he can click on it in Expression Blend, or he can go into the XAML and attach interactivity to it. All these names. So if you're a designer, you want to think. It puts a whole different responsibility on you than you've had in the past. Because 
In the past, you might say, okay, I'm gonna put all my text on one layer, you know, but now I know I should put the get started and the button together on one layer because they'll then become one unit that can then be set to link to another page or whatever it might be, or this should be one unit, whatever it may be. And you'll see that I'm gonna go into um, expression blend. I have to ask, how many of you are, oh, where is it? Hold on. There we go. Okay. How many of you use expression blend now or have at least seen it? Okay, a few. Let me just explain what it is a little bit. Um, expression blend is the software package that's used to create. Um, either WPF applications or Silverlight applications. It's got several parts to it. It's got the, um, the design side where you can go in and as a designer, you can just create your project in here. I'm gonna create a new project, in fact. And just so I stick with the theme of working on prototypes, I'm gonna create a sketchbook project, but I'm not going into a whole project until, um, we won't be until Jeremy takes over. But it um, gives you the opportunity to design visually in an application that if you're an Adobe Illustrator user, it looks like a lot like Illustrator. But what it's doing is in the background, it's using XAML. And XAML is a technology that was created by Microsoft to kind of visually draw a lot of these items out. So like for instance, if I choose here, I'm gonna choose Silverlight Sketchflow. I'm working with Visual, visual C Sharp. You'll see that the project opens. I've got my workspace here, area in the middle. And it's thinking. I want to make it. Do you, um, do you want to turn the lights? Yeah, that's a weird. Yeah, we'll change the. Um, is that better? Is that better or worse? That's, you know what? You want to go back to Yeah, because now the lights are down. It, I, um, yeah, this is the normal way. But you'll see. That bothered you, didn't it? Going to the light one. That's okay. Yeah, I kind of like the dark anyway. So, so um, what you'll see here is I have my workspace in the middle. And I'll just do a quick introduction to what Blend is before I go any further. But as I'm working here, you'll see that I can I have drawing tools over here and I can just click and drag elements out. I have properties, so I can apply properties to these items. But the cool thing is that while I'm making these items, you'll see that I have a XAML view over here. In the background, XAML's being written so that I don't have to know how to write XAML, but it's really logical. So like for instance, if I come in here, I'm going to go into my options for just a minute so I can set up my code editor to scroll. There we go. There, that looks a little better. But you'll see that in here, everything's in a grid. Got a name as a default, layout group. In that grid, I've got a rectangle. Here's the fill. But I could even come in here and say, no, I want the fill to be red. And go back to my design view, and it's red. So it's just writing XAML. So as a designer, I know a lot of you are developers and you, you might even write um, XAML code right now, um, but as a designer, this is a heck of a lot easier to come in here and visually draw out whatever I want my interface to be and then connect it with perhaps C Sharp or whatever I'm doing. So like just to give you an idea of the workflow, let's say that I'm in here and this is, my, this is going to be a button or whatever it may be. I can come in here and I can add, uh, I can turn this into a control. I can add interactivity to it. You'll see that over here in my projects panel, let me open this up so you can see this a little bit more, is included all the parts to this. For instance, in here I've got my XAML file, I've got, which is what I'm working on right here, but I also have included in that something called XAML.CS. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because we only have about an hour here, but I just want to kind of give you an idea of what's going on in the background. If I double click on this, 
you'll see it opens a code editor directly in Expression Blend, and this is my C sharp file. So if I'm going in and I'm building something, um, you know, maybe a, a, a user interface, I can connect those items, go into adding behaviors or going into adding kind of any kind of interactivity I want by using that code behind file and it travels all together in one project. So that's kind of where the integration comes into place, where I'm the designer and I can also add code. And so if you're a hybrid using Expression Blend, you're going into both of these things. Um, you're, you're building the interface, you're going into the C-sharp and you're taking an entire project and creating it or working with a developer for all the finishing parts. As a designer, I know that Jeremy and I, we know enough C-sharp to be dangerous. And that's it. So we know code snippets. We know how to make things happen. We don't understand perhaps we have to develop an entire application. But uh, if you're a designer working in Expression Blend, you start picking up the stuff and you start collecting a bunch of snippets that you cut and paste in order to make things work. So that's kind of where it is. All right, so let me go back to this. That was just my quick down and dirty demo. I am going to show you what I'm going to do with that Photoshop file. You'll notice that I'm in Expression Blend and I'm just going to choose Import Adobe Photoshop File. And you'll see that if I come in here, Okay, so I'm gonna open up that student comp that was open. And you'll see that before I can even go in there, it comes up with a separate window and every single one of my layers is recognized. So I'm designing the same way, but I can come in here and I can say, oh, you know what? I don't really want to bring this big folder in, or I don't wanna bring the tabs in. Or I can go ahead in and just flatten it all down into one image. But if I wanna bring it in as each separate items or even change the names if I want, I can double click on this. You'll notice that when I click okay, it all comes into my project, and you'll see that when I turn down this arrow, these are all the objects. So every one of the objects here, my objects and timeline, are separate objects that I can click on and add interactivity to, or change, or do whatever I want. But I'm, I have now the ability to take a native Photoshop file and make changes to it. Or if I'm the developer, I can come in here and I can start making this stuff work by clicking on it and going into the C sharp, or adding panel, or turning it into controls, or whatever. So you'll see that even here, I can come in here and lock these. I can turn the visibility off and hide some of these. Get them out of the way, bring them back. Really nice how this is organized. I'm gonna do this again with an Illustrator file, but what I'm gonna do with the Illustrator file is actually attach some interactivity to them so that you can see a little bit of how this works. If you use Adobe applications, and again, I'm thinking more on the design end, um, all your keyboard commands work the same. So control zero, fits in window, um, you know, control plus, 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 minus, 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 zoom in, zoom out. You navigate the same way. Um, from what I saw when I was initially out looking at this application several years ago, a lot of people from Adobe were actually on this team. So it was funny how a lot of this cons that consistency came through, or people who were formerly with Adobe, I should say. So it, it looks a lot the same as something that you might be used to if you're a designer working in these applications. And if you're a developer and you're trying to take advantage of this, um, still I think the visual tools work pretty well, um, pretty easy to figure out. So let me go ahead and, and by the way, stop me if you have any questions. Um, I speak really fast. And sometimes you can just tell me to slow down. But um, I came from a big family. You gotta get a word this stuff. Yes? Could you use this to create other files in my demo? Could you use this to create other files than XAML? Um, the root, why would you want to create another file other than XAML? Because XAML is what's used to create your Silverlight files or WPI. So, um, like, what other file would you, you know? Oh, if you want to create an HTML website, you can actually create a full website with navigation tools. 
directly in Expression Blend. And um, what you would, it, it would all be Silverlight and require a plugin. But if you're creating a whole website, then you would use Expression Web. Have you seen that yet? Okay. If you get the studio, like Expression Studio, it comes with Expression Web. And Expression Web is, it, I know you're familiar with Dreamweaver because we're going to talk to you about that. It's very similar in how it works to Dreamweaver. So you wouldn't have any problem making a switch. And the nice thing is it integrates well with a lot of the other technology. And with CSS, doing cascading styles, and Expression Web is really nice. So, yeah. Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and close this up. I'm creating a new project. And I'm not going to save that one. But hopefully you've seen how, how easy it is just to incorporate that. Here's the same file done in Illustrator as a lot of vector art. And um, a prototype that was built that maybe we want to take and add some interactivity to. So you can see, you know, type based text and all this kind of stuff. But again, if I'm the designer and I'm building my prototype in Adobe Illustrator, even though it looks really good, it's still static. And what if I wanted somebody to be able to, you know, play a movie or see it work? Well, then that's when I would bring it into Expression Blend. And the cool thing is I don't have to really do anything else in order to bring that out. I, I can just leave it as a native Illustrator file and import it into Expression Blend. So, um, and again, you see that I organize layers. And again, it's the same concept where as you're building this stuff, you want to start thinking about how these are going to work as, as components in an interactive application or website. So, but I should mention, we're talking about prototyping a website. You would still use Expression Blend for your prototyping. If you're doing a website, that's very typical to use Sketchflow to build your whole website and say, this is where I'm going to go, oh, here, here, and here, here. Um, and when you were finished, then you would take that and build it in Expression Web. So, okay, so I'm going to go ahead back into Blend, and I'm going to choose Import Adobe Illustrator file. You'll see it recognizes the Illustrator file. This time, it just drops it in. It automatically converted it to XAML. It's already, if I go into the XAML view, it just took everything I did. I can't imagine hand coding this, but maybe somebody would. But there's all the work that I've done converted into XAML. I'm going to press Control Zero. You'll see that my user control is the back control that is holding everything, kind of almost like the stage. And I'm just going to bring this workspace in a little bit. So you can see what it looks like, and I'm going to change the width of my control so it fits it's a little bit better. Okay. All right. So now let me just take a look at this and maybe apply some interactivity to this. First thing that happens is the entire Illustrator file comes in, and then when I open this up, it's got all those layers in it. And if I just want to see the layers, I can even take the name of the file and just choose a group, and then it just releases it to all the individual layers. And so now I can select all these things and apply interactivity to it or wherever I want. So I know that I want to go into this tab, the intro. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and you'll see that um, I can take my zoom tool just like in any Adobe application, and click and drag, zoom into this. If I need a larger space, I can close up some of these items, move this out. And I'm not going to do a lot of work with sketch styles here because this is where Jeremy's going to take over. But I am going to replace my slider with a control, a working control, a slider. And I'm also going to replace that picture of the sky with a real movie. So just little simple things. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. I'm going to go in here and say, in my project, I want to add an existing item. And I'm going to go out, find my folder. Jeremy doesn't know this, but I actually found a movie of him. Oh, <laughs> <gasps> it's not here. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeremy. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. 
Um, that's okay. We'll just use a standard movie then. That was going to be great. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to go in and just take a regular movie. And we'll just make it of a shark. So I'm just adding this into my project. And you'll see that if I were a really good developer, at this point I'm just throwing stuff in, I would create a new folder and put like all the videos in there. But that has been added to my project and it's going to travel with it from now on. It doesn't put it anywhere on my file just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it out and it's going to go onto my page and I can position where it wants, wants to be. I can take my rectangle tool because I actually want to clip it so it's got rounded corners. I'm going to click and drag the rectangle. I'm going up to my selection tool. And you'll see I can round the corners just by grabbing a hold of this little dotted line up here. And then I can select both the movie and my rectangle. And then just right click and say path, make clipping path, and now my movie is actually in there. And so I actually have a working movie, and I'll test this in a minute. But I want to control the volume. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my little slider here. And you'll notice that I can access a whole bunch of controls in here that are already pre-built. So I'm not really good at doing, you know, the development of a lot of this stuff, but pop-up menus, radio buttons, scroll viewers, slider, text, all this stuff is in here. So I want a sketchy one. So I'm up in the find area up here. I'm going to type in sketch. And then only the things that include sketch in their name are included. And I believe there is a scroll sketch that I want to get. And I'm going to go ahead and take the slider sketch. And I'm going to click and drag that out. And so you'll notice, and again, Jeremy will be going into this a lot more later, but everything is done in the sketch style, which is kind of neat. Because then again, when he's doing it, he's going to build the whole thing. And the sketch style, it really allows you to fo focus on the prototype and where things are, and not, uh, you know, I want this to be rounded, or I want this to be pink, or that all goes out the window. It's all about the flow and the user experience. But the really cool thing is that makes Expression Blend so great to work in is the fact that I can make this work. So I can take this slider, and I'm going to go into its properties, and you'll notice that Everything in Expression Blend is contextual. If I click on the movies, I get a different set of properties than if I click on the slider. So it all relates to what's active. I can go into the common properties and say, all right, I want you to start at about a halfway point. Oops, 25. Go from um, zero to a total of one, which means the slider starts right in the middle. And then I can click on my movie I can either select right out on the artboard here, or if it's easier, I can go ahead and click on the movie here. And then I can go over to the volume, and I'll just do a really simple little bit of binding here. I'll say, you know what, this volume, click on here. I want to bind it, element, to my slider, to the slider's value. Now I have a working slider in a prototype which is unbelievable. So you can now take your prototypes and make them active. So if I press F5 to build this, and by the way, we're using Expression um, Blend 4, which is available publicly, but sometimes it doesn't work as expected, so cross our fingers that we don't get something to bomb, but it looks like it's building fine. So I'm hitting F5, so if you're used to building your app and using F5 anyway, it's the same in Expression Blend. And, oh, I don't think we have volume here. But can I get sound out on this or no? Is that going to be too difficult? Oh, I think you guys can probably hear it. So, can you hear that? Yeah. But so you can take elements in a prototype and allow them to work so that people are actually looking at this going, oh, yeah, okay. You know, I, I like the way that works, or can we make, you know, this? position this in a different place or whatever it might be. But I can have play buttons, pause buttons, the whole bit set up and working in a prototype by doing this. And this is just taking, this is a quick, what took me like, if I weren't, wasn't talking to you, this would take about two minutes to drop my Illustrator file in and add some interactivity to it. So, make sense so far? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just do one more thing and that's going to be more 
I hope it doesn't kill those of you who aren't designers. Is this anyone who's a developer is this like really drives you crazy because I'm going to more Photoshop stuff? No? Okay, cool. Because I'm gonna go through what I'm gonna do next just so you have an idea. If you're building a prototype, you're best to if you're bringing in photographs and such, you're best to take advantage of like some of the filters in Photoshop and turn them into a sketchy photograph. Again, so people aren't thinking that these are final photographs. They're not working on a great up color or retouching or the lighting and all this kind of crazy stuff. So I'm gonna go into Photoshop and I'm gonna build a quick action that allows me to take a bunch of images, make them look sketchy, resize them to all the same size. Then I'm gonna drop all those images into Expression Blend and I'm going to build a sketchy little uh, box that, like a scroll viewer, and show you how to connect things so that you can actually scroll through items. But it, I think it's just a little simple exercise. It won't take that long, but the cool thing about it is it allows you to kind of pull all this stuff together, how these all link together. Because if you understand the whole workflow, the light goes on and then you're like, okay, this is what I need to do to make this work. It makes it so much more exciting. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, exit out of my player there that I went into, and I'm going to create a new project. Just leave it with Silverlight. I'm going to go back into Photoshop. There's this guy. And I'm going to go into, and I'm using CS5, which means that I can now take advantage of something called Mini Bridge. So if you're familiar with Adobe Bridge, it was a separate application, it still is, but I can actually access multiple files in a panel now right in CS5. So I've got my folder selected here, and I'm going to go ahead and take one of these images right now and open it up. So I'm just double clicking on it right in this panel. And I'm going to need to do what I'm doing to about 20 more images perhaps. And I don't want to open up each image and say, okay, sketch, change to this size, whatever. So I've got this image open and first thing I'm going to do is go in and find a window called Actions and say I'm creating a new action, and this is going to be called My Sketches, and record what I'm doing. And now when I come in here, and I'll just go ahead and say, all right, uh, I am going to go to a filter, sketch, make it look like graphic pen. There we go, good enough, okay. And I'm also going to go in and change the image size. I'm going to go ahead and set this for about 100 pixels. And all my images are different sizes, so when I'm all done with that, I'm also going to go into canvas size and just change this to pixels and pixels. And make it 125. So basically, what I've done, oops, change that to one. Basically, everything I'm doing is recording here. Everything I just did. I'm just gonna stop that recording, and now I'm going to apply it to all the images. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. I'm not even gonna save it, and go back to my little mini bridge and say, okay, I'm gonna take all these guys. And this is stuff you can do in any version all the way back to like Photoshop. There wasn't a CS, well, CS, yeah. You can do it all the way back to there. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna apply an action, a batch action. I wanna go ahead and take that my sketches action I just made. I wanna take all the images that I have selected in Bridge. I want to save all my images in this folder out of my desktop called done. And then just click okay. And if I had 100 images, they would all be done instantly. So if I'm setting up for a prototype, it uh, makes it really easy to get through and like, set all my images up. And now I'm ready to go back into Blend. I think I heard my phone. <laughs> you hear it ring run for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm back in here, and here's what I'm gonna do first of all. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, this is the other really great thing about doing prototypes in Blend. It allows, Blend allows you to take advantage of using sample data so that you can actually build list box, scroll viewers, all sorts of things 
with data that is either the sample data that's provided um, right in the application, or what I'm going to do is just edit it or customize it just slightly so that it looks more like what the product is that I'm building a prototype for. So I'm going to go into data. Let's see at the tab. I'll click on create sample data, new sample data. Just click OK. If I were actually saving this, I would probably name it and bytes data or whatever I was working on. And you'll notice that instantly, if I were to just take my collection and drag and drop it to my artboard, it instantly creates a list box. And that list box is working. But it doesn't actually look the way I want it to, but I can totally customize this. So even though you know, I'm building perhaps this list box for a website because I'm showing them how they can get information, um, I still want to do a little bit more. I want to include my little pictures in this list box because maybe it's a product view. Maybe I want the list box to go this way horizontally instead of vertically. And this is the stuff that's all done easily, but you see, this is working. So pretty cool for a prototype to have this stuff all working. <coughs> so if I come back to this, you'll see that I can edit the sample data. And this stuff just comes with Blend. It's like built in, this goofy little stuff. But you can change it. I can click on the edit sample data, and I could actually change what this text says if I want. And yes, you can bind to real data. But if you're just doing a prototype and you only want to see like 10 items, you can just put them in here right, right now instead of spending a lot of time. But I can also change what the items are. So instead of uh, Boolean and have this checkbox, I can say I want an image in here. And it automatically puts these goofy little sample images in, which you probably wouldn't really want. Okay, You might be showing pictures of people's heads or houses or cars or whatever. So I can come in here and click on these items. And I can say, you know, actually, I want to use this picture instead. And this one, this one. So I'm just quickly going through. And again, I'm not really connecting up to live data. This is just simply so that I can create a quick prototype for my job. And down at the bottom, I can add records or delete them. So I'll go to about seven. I think that's how many pictures I had. And click OK. And then I just drag it back to the list box. And there. And now my list box has pictures in it instead. But this can all be customized too, because this looks pretty bad right here. Um, so I'm going to go in. I'm going to right click on this list box, because everything in Expression Blend, all these controls that automatically appear, are built on templates. And you can go in and you can edit your templates. So if I come in here and I say, all right, I'm going to go in here and edit my template, edit current. I can see that there's what's called a scroll viewer in here. I can go to my properties, and I can say the scroll viewer, I'm actually going to change. Well, you can see all the properties that I'm able to change. For some reason, it's not coming up with what I would want here. Let me go ahead and just continue editing this guy now. I'll, I'll do that in a little bit. But included in that template is also how this data is kind of falling into place as well. So let me go ahead and think, at least make the pictures larger, maybe put the text to the side, wrap the text, all that kind of stuff. OK. Oh, you know why? I'm going to go in and edit this template. I am going to fix this. I'm going to go in. Um, and I just right clicked on this list box. I'm going to edit the layout of the items because I am going to change this to horizontal so you can see that. Okay, fine. Okay, I just click on my stack panel. And my stack panel, I'm going to change to horizontal. Okay. And so when I went into the template, you'll see that I now need to go back up a level to get back out to my actual project. So I'm just going to go ahead in here and say, all right, back out. And now I'm going to take the same list box. I'm going to right click on it again. And I'm going to say, I'm going to edit the additional templates, generated items, current. And that allows me to go in here and edit each one of these items, which is really kind of cool. So we go through, I'm showing you some quick stuff just to 
to show you the possibilities. We spend usually two days minimum when we're teaching this whole application. So just to give you a quick overview, there are different layout containers that do different things, depending upon what you want. There's stack panels that simply stack things. There's um, grids that allow you to do you know, like this sort of thing, this layout where you've got items moving around in sort of a grid. A stack panel is what's holding this together and it's forcing these things to stack. And I don't want them to stack. I want them to be beside each other. So I can right click on this item and I can say, change this to a grid. Now I can take this guy and say, I want you all these down here. I want this picture to be a little bit bigger. Take my grid, make it a little bit smaller. So I'm hoping that you're seeing like all the control that you've got in here and including the fact that I can come in here. Let me go ahead and shrink this down a little bit. This guy up. Including the capability to come in here and uh, just make this guy a little larger, like the text. You see I have text controls. I can come in here and make my text larger. In fact, I'll make it maybe 11. I can go into some advanced properties. So all these controls that and wrap the text, all these controls that as a designer, as you're building a prototype are so extremely helpful are right in here. And you'll see that it's applying this to all of the items. And if I exit this out, I'll just bring this up a little bit, you'll see that when I go ahead and I uh, build this, I now have a scroll going this way. And it was all done in just a little bit of time. So now here are my items. That's a weird picture. It actually looked like that. But now I can build a scroll. I can go in. I can, um, in the expression blend, I can tell it not to so, so, so show these scroll bars if I don't want. I can go in. I can create my own custom scroll bars um, and apply interactivity to them so that they navigate. But I don't know about you, but if I were showing somebody a prototype, and it was in Photoshop or Illustrator, this beats that a heck of a lot more. You know, because you're actually there and they're playing with this stuff. They're like, oh, okay. Oh, a combo box, okay. Oh, I see. And when they click over the tab, the tab highlights and this page opens. I mean, it's totally interactive. Sorry, I get excited about this, so it's pretty cool. So um, I think, Jeremy, you're going to be a few minutes in talking. We're going to have, I think you were going to be. Oh, okay, okay, you're gonna get, Brian's gonna get names for the drawing, so this is good because actually Jeremy's gonna be taking over at this point. Let me show one more thing. While you know what, do it while I'm talking. Okay, all right. I just wanna show one other thing because I think this is kind of cool how this comes together. I was talking about like knowing snippets of code and stuff. If I go into this list box, you'll see that um, I can go into the, I'm gonna go in and edit this template. Go into my properties, scroll viewer. Um, back, let me just, you know, I'll leave this as it is. There is something new um, in CS4 that I found really kind of cool, and that is um, something that has been a pain with interactive applications in the past, but creating your own custom type tools. You'll see that new in this version is uh, a star tool, which I can go into my properties and I can change the amount of points it has, the radius it has, so I can say, can you only give this three points, <coughs> change the radius, make it a really small thing. Rotate this around because maybe I want to have that as a navigation tool, okay? And the only reason I'm showing you this is because if you're a designer and you're not and you're not like me, you're not a C sharp expert. This is how easy it is to kind of connect this stuff. I have collected a whole bunch of code and that I use for different things, whether it's be for video or whether for playing things, which Ever it might be. And so I'm going to go in and open up just a text file and just 
to show you how, as a designer, this is just a really cool thing that you can do. Okay, I have saved the code that I need to make something become a scroll bar. Okay, and it's a C sharp. But I don't need to know that. All I need to do is go back, click on this item, I'm gonna right click on this polygon and I'm gonna make it into a control. The control I'm gonna make it into is a button. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the content presenter because I don't want that text on there. I'm gonna exit back out of here, call it left button. And then all I need to do is up here, you'll see here are my regular properties and here are my events. And here are all the events that are connected with the button. So even if you're a developer, you recognize the power that's in here. I made a button and all I need to do is double click on click, takes me right into the code editor, tells me, because I'm a total idiot, where I need to put that code that I just copied, and I paste it. Oh, did I get it? I didn't copy it, that's why. So this is, you'll see, I want to go over, so I'm going to copy this, go back into Expression Blend, and paste that. And now what I've done is I've actually connected an event to something I created using C Sharp without having to know like, a whole lot about it. And so a lot of this stuff, if you're a developer, you probably know a lot of these things, but you may not even know all the stuff that you can take advantage of in web development and design. But that's why you go to like silverlight.net or another really great website is codeplex.com. Is it codeplex.com or net? Com, which you can go in and do a search and find all these little snippets and this computation and then you're like a pro. You know, some of you just need to add a class at the top, you know, to make them work, but that's all generally included in the instructions. So, but now I have a button that will, instead of the scroll, that will navigate for me. So, um, Jeremy's going to pick up at this point and take you through, like, start to finish a prototype built right in Expression Blend because there's so many cool other options that. I didn't go into, my point of this was just showing you kind of the workflow and the integration of how everything works. Do you have any questions before Jeremy starts? No? 